What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm going to show you guys how you can test a separately excited motor at home. Generally, these motors are called shunt motors or sepix motor, separately excited, or they'll have the listings A1, A2, F1, and F2 on the case itself. Now, in your situation, you're going to have to place your motor on your transaxle because it only has one bearing in the end cap. And the transaxle's bearing on the opposite end of it will help support the armature. Now in my case, my motor that I have has a key shaft output and it has two bearings on it. However, it's gonna be exactly the same way as testing. Let's get started. So this is the motor we're gonna be testing here. This is a D&D motor. This is the ES-93-33 motor. It has your A2, your A1, your F1, and your F2. It has a keyed shaft output. We're in a belt drive system here. And it has a sprocket on the other side here. This right here, belt drive, is just acting as a jack shaft. I got this right here from the Sun EV truck a few years ago on the channel. I was going to use it for a project. I was actually going to use it for a bagged cart project. So we might be seeing this right here relatively soon. So let's get to testing this right here out. Now I took my orbital sander, my ground off the spot here on the end of the motor cap right here. We're going to test continuity between each of the terminals here just to make sure nothing is grounded out on the motor. This is a digital multimeter. We're going to use this right here along with the continuity setting right down here. Once you put it in the continuity setting and you touch your two test leads together, you should have an audible beep like so. If you do not have a multimeter, I'll put a link to a inexpensive multimeter in the description below where you can pick one up. Next thing we're going to test. A1 and the end case here, no beep, that's good. Case A2, no beep, that's good. Case F2, no beep, that's good. Case F1, no beep, that's good. Now we're going to test between A2 and A1. We have a beep, that's good. We need to test between F2 and F1. We have a beep, that's good. So it lets us know that nothing in here is shortened out or broken between A1 and A2 and F1 and F2. Now, in order to test this right here motor, we're going to connect A1 and F1 together. We're going to connect A2 and F2 together. Then we're going to take one of these right here to a 12-volt battery, and this right here is going to the other side of the battery as well. It even tells you right here, connect A1 and F1 to battery terminal, connect A2 and F2 to other battery terminal. Okay, so I have the A2 going to negative, and it's hooked to the negative of the battery. I have A1 positive, and I'll just tap it here. Reminder, do not test your golf cart motor on a bench. Be sure it's actually connected to the transaxle. This one right here has this extra cap with a bearing inside, since this right here has a keyed shaft output. Once we hook this right here to the terminal, it should spin if it's good. This is a good motor. Okay, that's how you test this right here motor. A2, F2 connected together. A1, F1 connected together. Then A2 to the battery. Then A1 to the battery as well. That's how you test this right here motor. Now let's see what kind of amperage this right here motor is pulling. With this right here gauge, it's going to show right here on the current. It's pulling 17 amps. 17.9, might as well say 18 amps. Release it. Back to zero amps. So that's exactly how you test a Sepix motor for a golf cart. 